you get this sort of sick feeling in your stomach that just stays there. It makes you feel hollow, yet too full at the same time. Your heart feels like it's about to leap right out of your chest and quit its job because it can't handle being abused like this anymore. You feel restless, like you can't settle down, but at the same time, you're completely exhausted and just need to lie down to hopefully make this ongoing headache disappear. Maybe you're lashing out more at the people who try to help you. And no matter how many times someone says, calm down, it's not that big of a deal, you'll be fine, or you're blowing this way in proportion. Has anybody heard the saying, you're making a mountain out of a molehill? Yeah, that's never reassuring, Dad. And still you cannot shake this feeling that something terrible is about to happen, and you don't know what to do. You're just not going to make it through the simplest of tasks. Or maybe you just feel numb. These are all common symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD. Anxiety is one of the most prominent mental disorders today, especially in high schools. Along with depression, GAD is a constant battle for many teens nationwide. And while most people turn to medications in hopes to ease their nerves, there are better alternatives for dealing with everyday life symptoms. Some of the best ways to reduce day-to-day -day anxiety can be as easy as a simple change in lifestyle. Now, to really understand how to treat something like GAD, we must first understand what exactly anxiety can do to the brain. When suffering from an anxiety disorder, the amygdala, the part of the brain that controls emotion, becomes over-responsive. This causes nervous feelings to override sensible ones. Natural Medicine Journal explains that the amygdala reacts this way because of an imbalance in key neurotransmitters located in that part of the brain that can increase serotonin, leading to fear or nervous feeling. The hyperactivity that comes from the amygdala and the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that controls heart rate and body temperature, can put off too much serotonin into the brain. Now, just a boost of serotonin that you get when watching a TikTok of a cute puppy is fine. But prolonged serotonin can interfere with your stress response. It disrupts your ability to control that nervous feeling when faced with a certain situation. Conventional medicines, such as SSRIs, are known to be effective for some people, but in others, they can only aggravate anxiety symptoms. Different types of anxiety disorders, like panic, at panic attacks, um, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsion disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and phobias, all include symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder. So with so many different types of anxiety disorders, there are also many ways to treat GAD. However, I wanna focus on one of the most prominent treatments first, pharmaceuticals. Benzodiazepines are a type of drug used to treat GAD that include the commonly known medications of Xanax, Clonopin, Valium, Ativan, and Onfi. While this may be most people's go-to to reduce anxiety, it comes with dangers that we all need to be aware of. Aspen Ridge Recovery Centers allow me to look into those dangers a little more. In 2013, the CDC found that about 30% of drug overdose deaths were related to the abuse of benzos. In 2016, Xanax was very high on the list of drugs that caused overdose deaths that year. To build up a tolerance to drugs like these, it's easy to increase your dependency, making you feel like you need to take in more to subside your symptoms. Benzos also come with a load of side effects. In short-term use, side effects can include drowsiness, confusion, and clumsiness. In long-term use, it can result in over-sedation, which will leave you feeling drunk. When using benzos for a longer period of time, there is also more of a chance for flu-like symptoms, nausea, problems with sleeping or memory, or even a personality change, or the desire to commit suicide. Crazy, I know, drugs are actually not the solution to this problem. So let's explore some alternatives to pharmaceuticals for treating and managing anxiety. For starters, cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, is a way of learning to manage anxiety problems and change your thought patterns to be more positive. Riticana Academic offers that exposure therapy could be the way to go. Because most symptoms from GAD stem from certain situations, exposure therapy allows you to confront those situations and that fear until it's no longer a problem. This could mean facing certain phobias or striking out of your comfort zone. If you suffer from something like social anxiety, aim to be around more crowds. Slowly make yourself more comfortable around people. The key to exposure therapy is control. The patient must be in control and exposure should be frequent and prolonged. It's best to practice this in multiple locations as well as different situations. Now, I understand that by me just saying this, it may be overwhelming for some people to hear, but remember that the situation is as easy as you make it. This is something for you to slowly integrate into your everyday life that will help you reduce anxiety. It's at your own will. Now, another form of CBT is psychotherapy, or better known as talk therapy. American Psychological Association assures us that psychologists are trained to identify and diagnose the different types of anxiety disorders. 
and while most people who suffer from something like GAD tend to avoid situations that make them talk about their anxious feelings, talking to a therapist, again, allows you to confront those feelings and get a different point of view on them. Psychologists are there to help you find the underlying cause of the overwhelming thoughts and provide solutions to feeling that way. They help the patient understand their own thought process and how to change their thought patterns. Now, this may not be something for you to do every day, but it is something for you to incorporate into your weekly or monthly routine. Now, something that you can do every day to help manage GAD is practice mindfulness meditation. Scientific America explains that just by practicing mindfulness meditation for a few hours, for a few weeks, the amygdala, again, the part of the brain that controls emotion, shrinks, affecting our fight or flight in our brains during stressful situations. This allows the prefrontal cortex to expand, making our brain function with more concentration and awareness. The connections between the amygdala and other parts of the brain become weaker, in turn making those overwhelming feelings weaker, and the connections with the prefrontal cortex grow stronger, allowing you to regulate your thoughts. HeartMind Online explains that we need our prefrontal cortex to be strong to increase our, to improve our pro problem solving, reasoning, impulse control, and perseverance. Now, the scale of these effects are all determined by the amount of time put in with meditation. Eventually, the immediate response to stress will be replaced with more thorough reasoning that's, taken, that's aided by taking the time to meditate. And according to Very Well Mind, all mindfulness meditation requires is scheduling out three to five minutes of free time to create a non-judgmental space where you can accept your thoughts, feelings, and sensations. It slows down racing thoughts and takes away negative thoughts and feelings by making you focus solely on your breathing and the awareness of your body and mind. Now, all you need to do is find somewhere comfortable and sit straight, but not stiffly. Focus on the movements of your stomach as you breathe in and out. Make it comfortable. Obviously, you will still have thoughts moving throughout your mind, but without focusing on them too much, note them for later and let them pass. Give yourself that break. If doing nothing bothers you, you don't have to just be sitting still. You can still get the benefits of meditation even if you're doing it wrong. It's called practicing meditation for a reason. Let's talk about a man named Jeff Vrabel, for instance. Jeff is a freelance writer for many magazines, including GQ, Men's Health, Time, and Billboard. Being a writer is a very demanding job, and with a family at home, Jeff often struggled to find time to relax. Even his boss pointed out how the stress and anxiety were affecting his performance and that he should probably find something to help render those feelings. Jeff attended a meditation class to try his hand at finally relaxing. Now, although he didn't quite grasp the concept of the class at first, with some help from his teacher and persistence, he was finally able to reach the nirvana state. And no, I don't mean the band nirvana that everybody wears on their t-shirt yet can't name five songs of. What I mean is the transcendent state that stems from Buddhist practices that has neither suffering nor desire, a place of total relaxation. Jeff began to schedule a time out every day to sit and observe his thoughts instead of being controlled by them. He realized that as a culture, we are constantly looking to be occupied, whether it be by jobs, household chores, or even smart devices. At the end of the day, after his meditation, he felt so much more accomplished than he would have if he'd spent those 20 minutes with useless entertainment. Now he continues to schedule that time out of his day to sit and relax and ease his nerves. He also found that taking a walk or putting away his smart devices for a while can help in the same way. And he's right. You can do mindful med mindfulness meditation while you are brushing your teeth, doing the chores like dishes or laundry, or even exercising. For instance, Jess, a woman who had been suffering from depression and GAD, found her peace while rock climbing. She uses that time to climb, and only climb. It's her form of exercise to have something solid to focus on and dump all of her worries out on the way to the top. And now, that actually brings me to my next point, just like Jess taught us, instilling regular exercise and diet into your daily life can greatly reduce anxiety. Starting with exercise is very easy, something very easy to start with. Mayo Clinic suggests that all we need to do is start with 10 to 15 minutes of physical activity and work up to exercising for 30 minutes a day. Physical activity doesn't mean having to go to the gym. It can be as easy as taking a long walk around the neighborhood or taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Maybe park a little farther out in the parking lot and give yourself a bit of a walk before work or school. Set reasonable goals and enjoy what you choose to do. Don't make it a chore. Harvard Health Pub Publishing explains that exercise diverts our attention and changes brain chemistry that ultimately increases anti-anxiety neurochemicals. We, uh, that makes it that all goes hand in hand with diet. 
Now, I know, I know, the D word can be a little scary, but I'm not talking about the kind of diet where you watch your carb intake and exclude sweets and limit how much you eat in a day. What I mean is adding or taking away simple things that you eat every day. Mayo Clinic again suggests that there are certain foods to incorporate into our eating habits that can help reduce anxiety, like eating a breakfast that has some type of protein that will keep you energized throughout the day. Eggs, bacon, and yogurt are all good foods to accomplish this. Including complex carbohydrates can increase the amount of serotonin in your brain, which can have a calming effect when receiving the rightful dose. Foods like oatmeal, whole grain bread, and whole grain cereal fulfill this need. In turn, it's also important to stay away from sugary foods and drinks that can overload your brain activity. Drink plenty of water and avoid or limit your intake of alcohol and caffeine. Now, I know it may be difficult for those who need coffee to survive, but really, these can all affect our moods in different ways. We need to make sure we are choosing things that keep our minds at ease, not that will keep us on edge and anxious. Now, moving on to my final point, I'd like to discuss the benefits of journaling. Now, I understand that when some people hear the word journaling, they may think this is, this is a dear diary instance. However, that is not the case. Journaling is not only good for children, but it is also extremely beneficial for teens and adults alike. PositivePsychology.com states that journaling is a way to control those negative feelings and to re redirect our train of thought to a more positive outlook. Including journaling into your daily or even just weekly routine can help create a better response to stress and anxiety. The site Inform tells us that when transferring feelings into words on paper, we offload those overwhelming thoughts onto the paper and out of our brain. Putting those feelings into words changes the response in the amygdala and lessens the hyperactivity, putting a break on the nervous emotions. Writing your deepest feelings and concerns or a to-do list of the upcoming events can help you perform better because you now have identified the nervous feeling and can focus on conquering the situation instead of worrying about it. Props to get you started on your journaling journey can range from expressive writing to really indulging into your deepest thoughts to writing poems or even just a to-do list, like I said. Write about what you're most grateful for in life. Write about what you did that day. Report on a recent movie or book that you just watched or read. Anything to get your mind working in a healthy way of thought patterns. Now, these are all easy solutions for dealing with everyday anxiety. Well, anxiety is prevalent across the nation and the world. While it's easy to turn to medications, the best way to reduce anxiety is simple lifestyle changes. Let me leave you with just one more success story. Kristen had her own journey of leaving benzos behind. She had severe anxiety and panic attacks, as well as many different phobias that she dealt with daily. She turned to medications and alcohol in hopes to ease her nerves. And after getting out of rehab for her alcohol abuse and overuse of benzos, she decided that she was ready to be off of everything, to be clean and sober. She had been on anti-anxiety medications for years and felt as though that she weren't experiencing the vibrant feelings of life, that while the medications were suppressing her negative feelings, they were also numbing her positive feelings. Kristen was able to taper off from the drug and realized that she had a new chance at life, that she had been given the opportunity to change things and fully experience life without being reliant on something that was actually making her feel worse in the long run. She had used exposure therapy to train herself and use that discomfort to grow and continue learning without the aid of drugs. She turned her fear into courage, and although that courage was uncomfortable, she became something so much more than someone dependent on medications to live. Now she runs a successful business known as Sobriety Bestie that helps others along the way of relieving anxiety. So the next time someone tells you you're making a mountain out of a molehill, don't look at it as an insult. Change your thought pattern to know that you are climbing that mountain and you are going to reach the top, proving to them and yourself that anxiety is no match for you. Thank you.